Uh, yes, a very pleasant good morning, children. So today we have got a new chapter, Bholi. We are going to do this. So the very word Bholi, you know, which is uh, which is a Hindi word, which means a simpleton, the one who is a very innocent person and doesn't understand the intricacies of life. We call that person as being innocent or a simpleton. So in this story, this character Bholi, her actual name is Sulekha. Okay, Bholi's real name is Sulekha and Bholi is her nickname. Sulekha is exactly the, you can say, opposite to Bholi. Sulekha is the one who is a master of letters. Okay, the one who writes neatly is called, the action of writing something neatly is Sulekha. Na? That is your Hindi word also. The one who writes neatly is Sulekha. So the one who is master of letters is Sudekha and the one who is a simpleton is a Bodhi. So in the story, we'll see like how Bodhi transforms into Sulekha, how she becomes a master of words, letters. So here is the uh, journey of a girl, journey, I mean the life story of a girl who is, uh, you know, uh, simpleton, because uh, she, uh, she had an accident in the childhood and because of that, her uh, mind development, she was not able to grow mentally that much. And moreover, she is not even that good looking because of some pock marks on her face. So because of uh, not very good physical appearance, not that uh, sound, mentally, she's not that sound. So she's called as Bholi and uh, her parents never ever wanted her that she should go to school but she gets the chance to go to school because of some reasons so her going to school turns out to be a turning point in her life and this girl realizes that her going to school is actually a very you know auspicious event of her life because in the school when she enters she finds the whole range of new occurrences ha happening in her life so the, uh, the very girl who was uh, not regarded with any love or respect at home, the one who would not even ever get a new uh, dress to wear or something, uh, she was never ever welcomed at home for anything. But when she went to school, uh, the kind of teacher whom she met, she, that teacher transformed her life because the teacher happened to be very uh, considerate, caring, and even encouraged her to do better. So Bholi realized like uh, she was told by her teacher that education will change her life and eventually uh, Bholi gets a, 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 you know she's going to get married and the one whom she's going to get married that person had never seen her and uh, and of course that person might have felt like maybe this girl is beautiful good looking and all so but the re reality was that that boy had never seen this girl and uh, when the marriage is going to take place, then the boy demands for a dowry. And uh, father, you know, the father of Bholi, you know, he requests that boy and family that uh, they should not ask for dowry and all. But eventually, it is Bholi who uh, r rises to the occasion and announces that he would not marry that boy. So the, her, the, the way this girl stands up and takes her stand that she would not marry the one who doesn't deserve her. So there we come to know that, yes, the education has actually uh, empowered her. Education has made her realize like what is actually good and valuable for him. Somebody who doesn't value you is not, uh, is not suitable for you. That is for sure. So let's see what this Bodhi story is about. It's a very beautiful story. You'll all be touched. So from her very childhood, Bholi was neglected at home. Why did her teacher take special interest in her? Did Bholi uh, measure up to her teacher's expectations? So we'll see this. Her name was Sulekha, but since her childhood, everyone had been calling her Bholi, the simple daughter. She was the fourth daughter of Nambardar Ramlal. So she was, when she was just 10 months old, she had fallen off the cot on her head and perhaps it had damaged some part of her brain. That's why she remained a backward child and came to be known as Bholi, the simpleton. So what accident had happened? 
what mishap mishap had made her uh, you know mentally a little less intelligent that at the uh, when she was hardly 10 months old she had fallen off the cot and uh, she had got her head injured and because of that some part of her brain was not working that well so because of uh, because she was mentally not that intelligent or sound she was co- called as bholi as a simpleton by the family at birth the child was very fair and pretty but when she was 2 years old she had an attack of sim- smallpox only the eyes were saved but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pock marks so the at the age of 10 she got uh, an accident and made, that made her uh, uh, you can say mentally retarded not exactly but to some extent and at the age of 2 she got chicken pox and that uh, spoiled all beauty of her face and she uh, her face and uh, you know whole body was disfigured because of those black pock marks so little suleika could not speak till she was 5 and when it made fun of, when when at last she learned to speak she stammered the other children often made fun of her and mimicked her, mimicked her as a result she talked very little so on one hand she was not very intelligent secondly she did not look good and thirdly uh, she could not even speak well she would stammer whenever she would speak so ramlal had seven children three sons and four daughters and uh, the youngest of them was bholi so he had uh, seven children and he had four daughters and this girl was fourth one so she was the youngest daughter it was it was a prosperous farmer's household and there was plenty to eat and drink all the children except bholi were healthy and strong the sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges of the daughters radha the eldest had already been married the second daughter mangala's marriage had also been settled and when that was done ramlal would think of the third champa they were good looking healthy girls and it was not difficult to find bride grooms for them so this is the family description where we come to know that this bholi belonged to a happy prosperous family where she had about seven six more siblings and all those other siblings were well settled Uh, education wise and also and otherwise also so when uh, so uh, father ramlal was not least worried about the marriage of his other daughters because they were all good looking and healthy right but ramlal was worried about bholi she had neither good looks nor intelligence okay so bholi was 7 years old when mangala was married the same year a primary school for girls was opened in the village the tehsildar sahib came to perform its opening ceremony he said to ramlal as a revenue official you are the representative of the government in the village and so you must set an example to the villagers you must send your daughters to school so here in this you know when bholi was about 7 years old then as it would be her luck also that uh, her elder sister elder sisters were all married and she only was left from girl side so in that year a primary school for girls was opened up the tehsildar of the village you know he he told this ramlal that because he was the uh, uh, revenue official of the representative of the government so he must set an example for the villagers by sending his daughter to school that night when ramlal consulted his wife she cried are you crazy if girls go to school who will marry them so this is what the people used to think earlier like if girls would be educated then no one would marry them what's he like for, what's he like a reason behind this kind of logic the reason was that if girls would become intelligent then they will become more intelligent than the boys so the uh, it is against the ego of the boys to marry the girls who are superior to them maybe intellectually or what right but ramlal had not courage to disobey the tehsildar at last his wife said i'll tell you what to do send bholi to school as it is there is little chance of her getting married uh, as it is as there is little chance of her getting married with her ugly face and lack of sense let the teachers at school worry about her so finally the mother of that girl you know agreed to send her to school uh, on what uh, you know reason because she thought like this bholi would not get married because of her uh, bad looks and moreover she was not very intelligent also so no one would marry her so let her go to school let her teachers see like what is to be done with this kind of dumb girl right 
Okay. So the next day, Ramlal caught Bholi by the hand and said, "Come with me. I'll take you to school, Bholi. I'll take you to school." Bholi was frightened. She did not. She didn't know what a school was like. She remembered how a few days ago their old cow Lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold. So when Bholi was told by her father that he would take her to school, she was very afraid. because she thought like uh, a few days ago the way her cow was taken out of the house and was sold she uh, she felt like maybe same, same thing might happen with her no 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 she shouted in terror and pulled her hand away from her father's grip what's the matter with you you fool shouted ramlal i'm only talk i'm only taking you to school then he told his wife let her wear some decent clothes today else what will the teachers and the other school girls think of us when they see her so the father told his wife that uh, uh, this girl bholi must be dressed up in a very decent uniform otherwise everybody would make fun of them so now the point is that bholi was given neat and clean dress on that particular day so that people don't laugh at parents new clothes had never been made for bholi she was never the one who ever got new clothes the old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her no one cared to mend or wash her clothes but today she was lucky to receive a clean dress which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted champa so no one uh, okay so but today she was lucky to receive a clean dress which had uh, which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted champa she was even bathed and oil was rubbed into her dry and matted hair only then she did begin to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home so when she was made to dress up nicely when she was made to get ready nicely then ever then she was convinced that she might be she might uh, being she might be taken to the place better than this home at least so the question is like uh, she was thinking that she was being taken to a better place than her home why did she think like this because for the first time she had been able to dress better clean cleaner dress and her hair had been uh, rubbed with oil and uh, combed properly otherwise no one ever bothered to uh, make her look better so when they reached the school the children were already in their classrooms ramlal handed over his daughter to the head mistress left alone the poor girl looked about her with uh, fear laden eyes there were several rooms and in each room girls like her squatted on mats reading from books or writing on slates the headmistress asked bholi to sit down in a corner in one of the classrooms bholi did not know what exactly a school was like and what happened there but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her own age present there she hoped that one of these girls might become her friend so right so the moment she reached there she was a little Uh, she felt a bit better number one from home also she was feeling a little better because she was well dressed up for this place and she was convinced that she was uh, going to be there at a better place than home and then when she found the girls of her age there then she also that also made her a bit comfortable because she thought that some of those girls or one of those girls might become her friends the lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but bholi could not understand nothing so bholi could not understand anything she looked at the pictures on the wall the colors fascinated her the horse was brown just like the horse on which the tehsildar had come to visit their village the goat was black like the goat of their neighbor the parrot was green like the parrots she had seen in the mango orchard and the cow was just like their lakshmi and suddenly bholi noticed that the teacher was standing by her side smiling at her so when the teacher was talking to the teachers other girls bholi instead of listening to the teacher kept on looking around at the drawings or at the paintings or whatever so whatever she saw around she was really very happy because the paintings depicted the you know animals or what exactly of the same color what they were so what's your name little one b b b she could stammer no further than that then she began to cry and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood so she could not even speak her full name properly and before that her she started crying also 
She kept her head down as she sat in her corner, not daring to look up at the girls who see who she knew were still laughing at her. So she uh, put her head down and could not even look up because the other girls were laughing at her. She didn't even have the courage to look at those girls because they were laughing at her. When the school bell rang, all the girls scurried out of the classroom, but Boli dared not leave her corner. Her head still lowered. She kept on sobbing. Okay, throughout the day, this girl kept on sobbing there. Boli, the teacher's voice was so soft and soothing. In all her life, she had never been called like that. It touched her heart. So the teacher, you know, called out to her in a very, very uh, loving and affectionate man manner. And she had never, ever been called out by anyone like that. So that touched her heart. Get up, said the teacher. It was not a command, but just a friendly suggestion. Boli got up. So the teacher told her to get up and it was not a command. It was a like, very uh, friendly gesture. Now tell me your name. Sweat broke out over her whole body. Would her stammering tongue again disgrace her? For the sake of this kind woman, however, she decided to make an effort. She had such a soothing voice, she would not laugh at her. So the teacher now, when everybody had gone, now the teacher asked her name again. Now this time, Bholi uh, wanted to speak her name out, but uh, she didn't want to be insulted again. But because the teacher's voice was so soft, she was convinced that this teacher would not make fun of her. Then she said, bho, bho, bho. she began to stammer again. Well done, well done. The teacher encouraged her. Come on, now the full name. So, uh, so finally the full name has come, Bholi. At last, she was able to say it and felt relieved as if it was a great achievement. So she was able to speak out her full name and it was as if she had done a great job in her life. Well done. The teacher patted her affectionately and said, put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like this, speak like everyone else. So the teacher told her, like, put your heart fear out. Only then you'll be able to speak like everyone else. Bholi looked up as if to ask, really? Yes, yes. It will be very easy. You just come to school every day. Will you come? Bholi nodded. No, say it aloud. Yes. And Bholi herself was astonished that she had been able to say it. Didn't I tell you? Now take this book. The book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color. Dog, cat, goat, horse, parrot, tiger, and a cow just like Lakshmi. And with every picture was a word in big black letters. So I guess you might have been able to make out like these were the alphabets, right? A for apple, like D for dog and C for cat kites. In one month, you will be able to read this book. Then I'll give you a bigger book, then a still bigger one. In time, you'll be more learned than anyone else in the village. Then no one will ever be able to laugh at you. People will listen to you with respect and you will be able to speak without the slightest stammer. Understand? Now go home and come back early tomorrow morning. So the teacher told her the secret of life. The teacher told her like, come to school daily and, uh, and moreover, the, when you will be getting educated, you will become the more learned person in the whole village. You, you will be the most learned one in the whole village. Then no one will laugh at you. you and people will listen to you with respect. So go home now and come tomorrow morning. Bholi felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the schoolhouse had blossomed into big red flowers. So her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life. So you, you are to answer like, how did her, how did she have a ray of life, a ray of hope in her life? So thus the years passed, the village became a small town. The little primary school became a high school. There were now a cinema, there were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton ginning mill. The mail train began to stop at the railway station. So the very village, the place which was a village a few years ago, that place became a town with all the infrastructural improvements over there. For example, uh, the school became a, a high school, cinema came up and a mail train started coming. So one night after dinner, Ramlal said to his wife, then shall I accept Bishambar's proposal? 
So now actually here, Ramlal is going to talk about uh, a proposal which has come for this girl that is Bholi. So Bholi might have grown up, become grown up now. So she was, he was, father was talking about Bholi's marriage. So he might have got a proposal from Bishambhar. Yes, certainly, his wife said, Bholi will be lucky to get such a well-to-do bridegroom, a big shop, a house of his own, and I hear several thousand in the bank. Moreover, he's not asking for any dowry. So the mother agreed because uh, she thought that Bholi will be very happy in that house because that uh, the boy belongs to a very well-to-do family. He has got a big shop and they have got their own house and they have got a lot of bank balance also. And the biggest thing is that the boy was not asking for any dowry. That's right. But he's not so young, you know, almost the same age as I am. And he also limps. Moreover, the children from his first wife are quite grown-ups. So this was the match for the girl. This was the proposal for the girl Bodhi. What kind of proposal it was? It was a proposal of, of the, the boy was of father's age. And then uh, he was a lame person. He limps. And then he even had very grown-up children. So that match the parents were considering as being very good for Bodhi. See? Yes. So what does it matter? His wife replied, 45 or 50. It is no great age for a man. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her pockmarks and her lack of sense. If we don't accept this proposal, she may remain unmarried all her life. So mother is like very, concerned, uh, very happy that they had got that kind of match for their daughter, the one who is not good looking and, and was, and even had uh, no sense. So she would be very happy according to her. Yes, but I wonder what Bholi will say. What will that witless one, uh, what will that witless one say? She's like a dumb cow. Maybe you are right, muttered Ramlal. In the other corner of the courtyard, Bholi lay awake on her cot, listening to her parents' whispered conversation. So Bholi overheard the whole thing. Bishambarnath was a well-to-do grocer. He came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the weddings. So wedding day came and he came with a big party of friends and relatives. A brass band playing a popular tune from an Indian film headed the procession with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse. Ramlal was overjoyed to see such a pomp and splendor. He had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding. Bholi's elder sisters who had come from, for the occasion were envious of her luck. So why was the father uh, so happy? Because he had never imagined that Bholi would get married like that. Even the other sisters were envious of her luck. See the mentality of the society where the society doesn't mind, doesn't bother like what, with whom is a girl going to be married? When the auspicious moment came, the priest said, bring the bride. Bholi clad in a red silken bridal dress was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire. Garland the bride, one of the friends prompted Bishop Bernath. The bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds. A woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face. Bishambar took a quick glance. The garland remained poised in his hands. The bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. So the bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. Have you seen her? Said Bishambar to the friend. Next to him, she has pockmarks on her face. So the bride, sorry, the groom, who was uh, uh, like uh, so old, so mature, he asked his friend if he had seen that girl. She had pockmarks on her face. So what? You are not young either. Maybe, but if I am to marry her, her father must give me 50,000 rupees. See now, the boy doesn't, that groom doesn't realize that he is of girl's father's age and uh, should not marry her. But if at all he is going to marry her, he says, then I would need Dory there. And that must, that her father must give me 5,000 rupees. Ramdal went and placed his turban, his honor, at Bishambar's feet. Don't humiliate me so. Take 2,000 rupees. No, 5,000 or we go back. Keep your daughter. Be a little considerate, please. If you go back, I can never show my face in the village. Then out with 5,000. Tears streaming down his face, Ramlal went in opened the safe and counted out the notes. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet. So father bent inside and brought that much of money and kept it at the 
feet of Bishambarnath. On Bishambar's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. So Bishambar was very happy because his uh, greed had been satisfied. He had gambled and won. So Bishambar actually might not be actually meaning this. He might be in need of a wife. So he would have married her also otherwise. This is what I can make out from this line. He had gambled. He had, he had just uh, gambled and he had won. Give me the garland, he announced. Once again, the veil was slipped back from the bride's face. But this time, her eyes were not downcast. She was looking up, looking straight at her prospective husband. And in her eyes, there was neither anger nor hate, only cold contempt. So now this time, the veil was slipped back from the bride's face. But this time, Bholi was not, uh, you know, uh, feeling shy. She was not looking down. Rather, she was looking straight at her prospective husband. And there was neither anger nor hate, but there was only cold contempt. Means that she was indifferent towards that man. Bishambar raised the garland to place it round the bride's neck. But before he could do so, Bholi's hand struck out like a streak of lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. She got up and threw away the veil. So the Bholi, what did she do? She threw away the garland into fire and she also stood up and threw away the veil. Pitaji said Bholi in a clear, loud voice. And a father, mother, sisters, brothers, relations and neighbors were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest stammer. Now when she started speaking, everyone was amazed to find that she was speaking without stammering. Pitaji, take back your money. I'm not going to marry this man. Ramlal was thunderstruck. The guests began to whisper, so shameless. So ugly and so uh, so ugly and so shameless. So the the guests started saying that it is so shameless that the girl is announcing that she would not marry. Okay, Bholi, are you crazy? Shouted Ramlal. You want to disgrace your family? Have you regard for our Izzat? For the sake of your Izzat, I was willing to marry this lame old man, but I will not have such a mean, greedy, and contemptible coward as my husband. And I won't, and I won't, I won't. So the, she made it very clear, like only for your Izzat only, I was going to marry this old and lame person. But only, uh, but now I'm not going to marry this greedy and hit, disgusting man, disgusting coward. But a shame, what a shameless girl. We all thought she was a harmless dumb cow. Boli turned violently on the old woman. Yes, auntie, you're right. You all thought I was a dumb, driven cow. That's why you wanted to hand me over to this heartless creature. But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool is speaking. Do you want to hear more? Bishambarnath, the grocer, started to go back with his party. The confused bandsman thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song. So the band, the one who was blowing the band, that person again started singing that, uh, striking that song on the band because he thought like now the wedding is over. Ramlal stood rooted to the ground. He, his head bowed low with the weight of grief and shame. So father, like, uh, uh, he, he was very ashamed of like what was happening. The flames of the sacred fire slowly died down. Everyone was gone. Ramlal turned to Bholi and said, but, but what about you? No one will ever marry you. What shall we do with you? And Sulekha said in voice that was calm and steady. Don't you worry, Pitaji. In your old age, I'll serve you and mother and I'll teach in the same school where I learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? So that girl, Sulekha, told his parents that she would take care of her parents when they would become old. And moreover, she would be teaching in the school from where she had learned so much. The teacher had all along stood in a corner watching the drama. Yes, Bholi, of course, she replied. And in her smiling eyes was the light of a deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of a masterpiece. So the teacher was so happy because uh, this was the completion of a masterpiece. So Sulekha was the masterpiece of her teacher. What she wanted that girl to inculcate in her, that had actually happened. So that Sulekha had actually become the master of the words that we have seen. Okay, children. So today you go through these questions. Uh, go through them and do them also tomorrow uh, or day after tomorrow we will be discussing these questions would that be fine or not come on have you understood the story 
Have you all understood the story? Or are you sleeping? Okay. 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 Okay, then go through this uh, chapter, go through the chapter again and do its question answers, okay? For the first time in my life, I have done one story in one go.